everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel so in today's video i'm going to be talking to you about my experience of applying to university to study maths i'm going to be talking about why i chose this subject what unis i decided to apply for and how long these offers took to come through where i got offers from and just generally how i found the entire experience so that hopefully this will help anyone that's currently going through this process or is thinking about applying to university next year then maybe this will give you a flavor of what a typical ucas timeline maybe looks like for similar kind of courses or similar kind of universities. Just a little disclaimer before I get started, I'm actually talking to you guys today about my UCAS experience in the academic year 19 to 20, as this is when I was in year 13 in sixth form and I decided to apply for maths. However, I actually ended up deciding to take a gap year this year and I'm now reapplying for a slightly different course. I've applied for more economics based courses this year and I'm gonna be making a video that's going out next week about my journey so far with my economics application. So if you want to watch that, then make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss that next Wednesday. But today I'm gonna to be talking about my experience last year and going from start to finish on how I found the whole process and hopefully this will really help some of you guys. So for me personally the decision to study maths was just something that kind of developed over quite a long period of time. It wasn't really something I'd always had my heart set on but equally it wasn't a last minute decision and something that I just suddenly woke up and realised that I wanted to study. It just gradually developed and I think for me maths had always been one of my favourite subjects at school and it had definitely always been my strongest subject and as time went on I kind of realised how invested I was in it and how much I was enjoying studying it. I think I particularly realised this as I got to year 11 and I did my GCSEs and I was kind of aware of how much time I was spending on maths and how hyper invested I was in my maths grades. I was just super obsessed over them all the time, probably not in a healthy way, but I just cared about maths so much more than I cared about any of my other subjects. And it's not that I didn't care about my other subjects, I cared a massive amount about every subject that I took, but maths was just on a whole different scale to everything else. And at that point, I really realized how much I was invested in it and how much I was really enjoying it. So this led me to then study maths and further maths at A-level, which I absolutely loved. I had a really small class, there were about 10 of us, I think, and we did both maths and further maths together just as the 10 of us. So that was about eight hours a week that we just had our small little group and I think we built up a really good connection with each other and with our teachers and that just made it a really supportive, like encouraging learning environment. And for me, that kind of just drove the passion further. It meant I invested a lot of time into going above and beyond what I was doing in school because I was just enjoying it so much. So that by the time I got to the end of year 12, when people started thinking about university places and university decisions, there was absolutely no doubt in my mind that I wanted to do something related to maths. However, the dilemma I was having was whether I wanted to do a pure maths degree or whether I wanted to do maths alongside something else. And eventually I came to the decision that I wanted to do straight maths and that is what I ended up applying for. But I've kind of changed my mind on that definitely since then and that's partly why I've ended up reapplying is to do something that's slightly more applied math and that isn't just 100% abstract kind of mathematics all the time. So after settling on definitely wanting to apply for maths, I started looking at different universities and where I might like to apply to. And for me, I'm a massively indecisive person and I also like to do a lot of research before I make any kind of decisions. So this was hard and very, very time consuming and it took me a long time to get down to a list of five potential universities but I eventually got there and having chose five that I really was happy with I then went to open days for these five to make sure that I really really liked them and I was definitely still happy to go there before I actually ended up putting them on my UCAS form and luckily I did really like all the universities that I visited and they became the five that I sent off my UCAS application to so over the course of the summer months in year 12 I visited Oxford, Imperial, Warwick, Bristol and Bath and they became my five choices. Having decided that I wanted to apply for Oxford, this meant I would have to go through early entry, which has the deadline of the 15th of October. So I knew that I was gonna to have to do my personal statement considerably earlier than a lot of my friends. And it also meant I was gonna have an admissions test at the end of October. And for me, I then took the decision to write my personal statement during the summer of year 12, so that in my summer holidays and my first couple months of year 13, I could purely focus on admissions test prep without the distraction of my personal statement. So by the end of July of year 12, I had actually finished my personal statement and it was down to the limit and ready to send off to my universities. And I'm going to make a separate video talking about my experience with that because I think that can be quite a long story in itself. But essentially, by the time I was leaving for summer at the end of year 12, it was done. And I was super, super happy about that. And over the next few months, I then focused solely on my admissions test. 
However, this became very, very stressful because for me, it wasn't just Oxford that was looking at this. For the MAT, which is the MAT admissions test that Oxford look at, it's also considered by Warwick, Imperial and Bath. And these were three of my five choices, plus Oxford, that was four out of five of my choices that were going to be looking at this one test. So I suddenly felt a lot of pressure and I put a lot of pressure on myself to prepare as much as possible. I spent a lot of my summer holiday doing it. Even when I was away abroad in the evenings, I would sit doing math papers and looking back, I just think, why did I not just give myself a break? But I really felt a lot of pressure with this. And by the time it got round to doing the admissions test, I was just completely over it. I was really, really struggling with it. And I just knew going into that paper that it was not gonna be anything good. I was having no confidence in myself. And as soon as I came out of it, I remember looking at the other girl in my year that also sat at this paper and we just looked at each other and were like, that was awful. And I knew at that point I was not getting into Oxford. I knew that my admissions test had been completely messed up. It was just not happening for me. And I just had to accept that. Having performed a lot worse in my admissions test than I would have hoped to, I knew that I was gonna get rejected from Oxford. It was just a matter of waiting for that to be officially confirmed. But my other university choices, I was very unsure about because I wasn't sure how much waiting they were gonna put on that admissions test and whether they would still consider me for an offer despite having performed really, really badly. And once I got my results back from the mat, I actually did a lot better than I was expecting to, but nowhere near as well as I should have been doing. And I'm kind of brushing over this briefly because I'm actually gonna make a separate video talking about my experience with Oxford and the admissions test because I think there were a lot of other things going on in my life at that point as well that it makes it quite a long story to explain and I don't wanna make this video super, super long. Um, so I was rejected from Oxford. That officially came through, I think, around the 4th or 5th of December of 2019. And obviously I was really upset, I was gutted, but at the same time I had been expecting it. So. I was able to kind of get upset about it and move on from it after that and just wait and see what my other universities said. So I've actually skipped forward in time a bit there because I just wanted to get Oxford out of the way for the moment because that actually is something that I kind of compartmentalized away from my other four universities. It wasn't somewhere that I'd actually really considered I was gonna get an offer from. So it was kind of just separate to my UCAS application. I didn't really consider it in conjunction with my other four choices. And that's why I wanted to just talk about it separately. And I will go into more detail about that in the future. But with my other four choices, so I actually submitted my UCAS application on the 10th of October. And I wasn't really expecting to hear back from anywhere for quite a long time because as I said, four out of my five choices were looking at the mat. So I kind of thought I wouldn't hear back until at least after that was done and it had been marked and universities had had a chance to look at that paper. However, on the 16th of October, I got an email from UCAS Track telling me that I had an update and I'd actually gotten an offer from Warwick and I was super ecstatic about this because at this point in time, Warwick and Imperial were my two joint top choices. So to have an offer from there so soon after I'd submitted my application and thinking that they were gonna be waiting for my mat, I was so, so happy and so, so relieved. And actually later on in that day, later on on the 16th, I got another update from UCAS and I'd also been given an offer from Bristol University. And again, this wasn't one of my first choices at that time, but I was still super happy, an offer is still an offer. And two offers in one day, so soon after I'd sent off my application, I was super over the moon with and super, super happy about. October for me was a very busy month because on the 10th I'd sent off my application, on the 16th I got those two offers, and then on the 30th I had my admissions test. And all throughout that month I'd been prepping for that test. And once it was over, it was very overwhelming. And it was then very suddenly a very, very long waiting game. So as I mentioned a minute ago, my rejection from Oxford came through at the start of December. December and after that it was then about another month before I heard back from any other unis so around the first week or two of January I cannot remember the exact date now I got another update from UCAS track letting me know that I needed to log in and I logged in and I actually had an offer from Bath and I'd been given a reduced offer based on my performance in the admissions test so I actually had an offer of A star A B and I was super, super happy with this. Really, really was not expecting to get that because I didn't think I'd perform well enough. So I was really excited about that. And it meant that with my grades, I was definitely gonna be guaranteed a place at Bath if I chose to put it as my firm or insurance because I knew that my grades were above what that offer was. So that for me was a big, big fallback because for Warwick, 
an offer of three stars and not knowing what Imperial was going to give me, it was really nice to have that fallback option of knowing that I had an offer that was definitely very achievable for my grade. So this left me with only Imperial to hear back from and by this time I had 100% decided that Imperial was my top choice. I'd gone back to visit Warwick at an applicant day and really not liked it. I think the vibes that I got from there the second time around I just really didn't enjoy it. I felt like it definitely wasn't the right environment for me. So that had completely put me off Warwick and I'd actually revisited Bath and Bristol. Bristol I really loved as a city, but the university course for me just wasn't ideal. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for. But Bath, the first time around when I visited it as the open day in the summer, I'd liked it, but it definitely wasn't my top choice. I'd say actually it was probably bottom of the five choices that I picked. But going back to it on an applicant day, I really loved it and I really liked the course and it suddenly became quite high in my top choices list. So I was then between pretty much Bath and Imperial, they were my top two choices and I was just waiting to hear back from Imperial and finally on the 10th of March I got an offer from Imperial which I was super excited about. I was so surprised because I wasn't expecting it at all and I've been waiting so long, not very patiently, stressing a lot so it was a massive relief to get that. However, I got an offer of three A stars and a two in the step two and step three papers which are the admissions tests for Cambridge that are also sat at the same kind of time as your A-levels and for me this was a bit of a downer to be honest because that just felt so unachievable. I'd had a really bad experience with the MAT admissions test and I just didn't know if I was able to kind of put myself through that similar kind of process again and at this point in time I think as year 13 went on I just progressively found myself struggling a lot lot more and I don't want to go into that in too much depth today because again I think that's quite a long story but by the time I got to March when I got my last offer through I was really struggling with school and it was also when the pandemic started happening and things were very much up in the air so my offer for Imperial was a lot less exciting than I would have liked it to be obviously I was super happy to get an offer but I was then in a bit of a sticky situation of not really being sure what to decide. Once A-levels were cancelled, we didn't really know how that grading system was going to work. We didn't really have any information of how teachers were going to be predicting our grades. And that was a very stressful wait, waiting to find out what was going to happen. But one thing I was confident of was that I was going to be predicted the, at least the grades that I needed to get into Bath. I knew that I'd been working at above an A star AB A-level rate. And I was confident that if I put Bath as my firm or insurance, I was going to be able to get into there so this really swayed me towards Bath but I wasn't confident that I would be predicted three A stars and I also at this point had decided that for my mental health doing the step papers was just not worth it it wasn't a decision that I felt like would be the right one for me at the time so I actually ended up not taking my imperial offer and for me this was really disappointing because I'd always I haven't really had a dream uni I've never had a specific uni that I've always aspired to go to but my dream I would say has always been to study in London and Imperial was my chance to do that and just for a lot of reasons I felt like doing the step was just not the right decision so I ended up actually firming Bath and putting Bristol as my insurance and this was a massive twist of fate because Bristol and Bath had been my fourth and fifth choices originally when I sent off my UCAS so to suddenly have them as my firm and my insurance was very very strange so as I said Bath was my firm at A star AB and Bristol was my insurance which was actually higher grades at A star AA so it was pretty pointless for me to have an insurance but to be honest I was confident that I was going to get the grades I needed for Bath and that was what was important to me at the time and I knew that I preferred Bath a lot more as a uni over Bristol so that is how I got to that decision. So I actually firmed Bath at the start of May and it was just then a very long waiting game until the 13th of August when I would get my A-level results to find out if I'd gotten in or not and luckily I did get a place at Bath. I was super super excited on the day. I really exceeded my offer which I was really really happy about and everything kind of started feeling like it was falling into place. However, as time progressed and it got to the few weeks before I was getting ready to go to Bath, for a lot of different reasons, I started really thinking about whether that was gonna be the right decision for me and I ended up deferring my place and saying, actually, I'm gonna take a gap year and I don't really want to come this year. And that has led me to where I am now. I'm currently on a gap year. I'm reapplying for a slightly different course. And as I said, I will explain that all in next week's video. 
Okay, so my camera actually cut out at the end, which is really, really annoying. So you've now got a curly haired, slightly less made up version of me ending the video. But as I was saying, if you want to see my economics application journey so far, then make sure to stick around for next week's video where I talk all about that. But for today, I really hope that this video has been helpful for anyone that's applying for like mathematically related courses or maybe it's applying to similar unis as me. I really hope this has given you a kind of general consensus of what a typical timeline of an application process might look like. And if you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to give me a massive thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you've applied to any of the same unis as me or you're planning on applying to them or also if you're applying for a similar course then I'd love to hear what unis you ended up deciding on and finally if you want to see more content talking about sixth form a levels applying to uni that kind of stuff then make sure to subscribe and I will see you next time with a brand new video bye